Hello, gentle peoples. How are you guys doing today? Oh man, I'm really excited. Um, I was just going to uh, take uh, this week's podcast and just kind of put it out there. Uh, and I don't always do a preamble before the episode. I usually go right into the theme song, um, which is written by Todd Fast Red Fingers. Uh, and the song is called Flying. If you ever want a copy of that song, please let us know. The, get the full version of that somewhere that we can send your way. But um, I did want to do a preamble to this episode because I think something really, really special happened with this particular one. Um, Corey's a great guy. He, he honestly is. He is one of the best people you will ever meet if you've had the opportunity of meeting him. And you probably have, because everybody knows Corey. But I am privileged to have this guy as a, as a friend and a peer and uh, somebody I can count on. Um, my relationship with this man is, uh, I don't know, it, it, it's really hard to describe, but like, we have this bond that can never be broken, can never be beat, um, and will always remain strong. And, um, and it's based on pure and utter respect for the guy. He has a, a heart of gold and truly, truly a great guy. So this weekend, uh, this weekend he did something really good for the show, which, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was the pride parade, uh, as of this recording, it was the pride parade yesterday and he went out and represented the podcast. He had, uh, he had his little press pass and kind of wandered about and just talked to people and just listening to him, interviewing people, the, uh, excitement in his voice, you know, representing the show and talking to people. And I, you know, I, I did want to do the, the pride parade. It's something I haven't done. I intend to do. I just, things are always difficult when you have children. Um, in our situation, it, it, it's not something I don't, uh, let's just put it this way. It's not something I don't want to do. It's just something that's, uh, incredibly challenging logistics wise to do. Um, I'm really glad we have the Pride Parade here in Winnipeg. Uh, I, I think it's it's a very good thing. I think it's a great thing, actually. And just having Corey out there, and Corey is the guy who looks out for the people. Incredibly kind, incredibly generous, incredibly patient. Um, and his sense of empathy with people is off off the charts. So to have him out there and just talking to people and, and hearing him interacting with uh, all these wonderful people, I don't. It just it, it does my heart proud that uh, I'm lucky enough to be friends with him. Good dude. So anyway, this episode, um, even though it's got the Sean Geek name on it. I had nothing to do with this episode. This is entirely on Corey Geek and the wonderful man that he is going out representing and just, man, just proud of this freaking guy. Love this guy. I really, truly love this guy. Um, and uh, to all those at the uh, at the Pride Parade, good on you. Uh, great turnout. It looks like everything worked out really well. I don't know. It's a good day to be a human being. That's how I feel. Anyway, here you be. Uh, See you on the flip side. Or see you on the other side of the entrance. Hello, 
Geeks. This is the Corey Geek with the Sean Geek Podcast. We're down on Memorial Boulevard on June 2nd, 2019, gathered for the 32nd Annual Pride Parade. I'm here with the Geekon crew, marching in solidarity with the Winnipeg's LGBTQ2S community. And we are going to be speaking with a couple of the con organizers and uh, various people from the convention about their involvement in Pride, their personal experiences as LGBTQ2S individuals, and ultimately standing in solidarity with those that haven't always had a voice. The first Pride March was on August 2nd, 1987, when 250 people gathered at the Manitoba Legislative Building to wait the results of a provincial government decision to include sexual orientation in the Human Rights Code. The crowd had gathered to march in celebration or protest, depending on how the government voted. Ultimately, the government voted in favor, and the first Pride Parade commenced in downtown Winnipeg. Every year since then, there's been a uh, Pride Festival. It usually starts with a flag raising at City Hall on the first Friday of uh, the week, leading into June, and culminates with the Pride March through downtown Winnipeg. All right, geeks. So we're getting very close to the beginning, probably about 10 minutes off now of the official launch of the march. And energy is palatable around here. You can feel it. I really wish I could give you a sense of the scope of this thing. There has to be well over 10,000 people gathered in the area of Memorial Boulevard. We have uh, crowd stretching from Broadway, heading straight down. We've got music playing from, uh, I think it might be the Air Force. We've got various DJs, bubbles, everything going on. It is just absolute amazing spectacle. If you guys haven't ever been out to a Pride Parade, I would highly recommend it if for no other reason than to just support everything that is being done here for the LGBTQ2S community. As a country, I think this is something that is very, very special. Only a pride, people. Right now, we got the Canadian Air Force Band playing It Is Raining Men. Oh, it's raining men. Yeah. This one this time. All right, we are here with Carol LeBlond and Leanne Burkinsley, and we're talking about Keycon's involvement in the Winnipeg Pride Festival. So how did KeyCon first get involved with Winnipeg Pride? Uh, it started four years ago when our lovely con chairs, Carol LeBlond and Alex Storinell, wanted to get involved in the community, and someone suggested Pride. Yeah, we, it was suggested to us as a great way to get out there and be a part of the community, to get a walking group together, and the uh, community, the KeyCon community really came together. We had people who donated signs and made shirts, and we all just got together and walked in the parade. Okay, and how long has uh, KeyCon really been involved in the Pride community overall? KeyCon's always been a part of the part of the Pride community. Right from KeyCon One, we've had queer guests, queer paneling, and in truth, so much of the organizing committee from year to year all fall under the queer umbrella. Oh, do you have any personal experiences with uh, LGBTQ2S? Uh, I myself am a bi individual. Uh, I am married to a man, but that's never stopped me from relationships with women. Um, but I've I, again, I'm myself, I'm a bi individual. Many, many members of my family fall within the uh, queer umbrella, uh, as well as my chosen extended family. Now, Leander, you've uh, long been a advocate for the LGBTQ2S uh, community. Can you tell us something about that? Well, it all started uh, when I was a teenager and actually uh, the HIV AIDS crisis. Uh, when I started losing friends to uh, the infection. 
and it grew from there. I myself am a bisexual polyamorous woman. My eldest child is gender queer. She uses she they. Uh, my youngest uh, son has identified that through my work and his involvement that he's uh, pansexual. He he doesn't care about a person's gender. He cares about the person. So I count that as no matter what else I've done advocacy, I've won. <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to say about uh, Kikon's involvement? Uh, Kikon is... Kikon recognizes that there have been some missteps over the last several months and possibly over the last several years. I can't say from personal experience. We are working to correct those missteps. Those who attended Kikon this year saw the pronoun option on our badges. That is something we intend to continue um, and we intend to continue listening and hearing from the members of our community who would like to engage in a respectful discourse with us. All right, excellent. So with regards to the LGBTQ community, what do we have on tap for next year's programming? So for next year's programming, it's a very loose thing right now. I mean, we've just finished this year. Um, our theme overall is world building, so we are looking for people who want to talk about their world and how they build it and how it builds the greater fandom community, whether that's the LGBTQ2S plus community. Um, we don't have any programming nailed down right now. Programming is, of course, on the whim of volunteers. Um, if there's something someone wants to see, please send an email to keycon2020 at gmail.com, um, and we will be happy to put you in contact with our programming director. All right, thank you. Heavy Metal of Pride! I'm here with Cliff Strinell from Games from the North. Uh, that's Games from the North on Twitch TV, right? That is uh, Games from the North on Twitch TV, yes. Let's try to say my URL. <laughs> so how long have you been uh, coming to Pride now? I've been coming on and off for over 20 years. Um, it's been a while since I've been back, um, but this year I wanted to come back. It was important to me. So what's your connection to the LGBTQ2S uh, community? Uh, well, I'm pansexual myself. I'm polyamorous. Uh, I have family members that fall on the LGBTQS uh, alphabet, um, ranging from aunts to uncles to daughters, you name it. So it's important to everyone. All right, and what have you been seeing here so far today? Uh, I've seen everything from you know small community-based groups to massive companies like Toronto Dominion Bank, uh, Ubisoft. I just bumped into the entire Ubisoft group and gave them all Teton.org buttons. Okay, that's amazing. That was pretty awesome, yeah. I told them thanks for making great games. So if you guys want to uh, check out Games from the North, they are a uh, gaming channel. They do board games, video games? We do everything. We do board games, role-playing games, uh, video games. We also do talk, uh, like we do deep chat. Um, we even have some ASMR that's happened a few times. Okay, that's awesome. So I think we're about, what, 10 minutes out now? I think we're about 10 minutes out from starting the parade, yeah. And the energy is, you know, definitely getting high. And so are the bubbles. There are a lot of bubbles here, people. I cannot tell you just how many bubbles there are. 
All right, so we're going to start getting ready, and uh, let's sign off from Cliff. Thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, be sure to check out Sean Deet and uh, Davis of the North. All right. We've got furries in the crowd. We've got dinosaurs. We've got members of fandom. We got goths. We got all our people. They're all out here supporting Pride on Winnipeg 2019. Literally, there's such a positive attitude out here right now. We've got families. We've got people with their dogs. We've got people, photographers. We've got babies. Come on, we got like two-year-olds. Waving their flags in solidarity. We got a guy in a leather dog mask. I mean, what says pride more than a guy in a leather dog mask? We've got older members of the LBGTQ2S community out showing their support. We've literally got people from all walks of life down here along Memorial Boulevard in Winnipeg, Manitoba for 2019 Pride. Show your pride, Winnipeg! <laughs> that was awesome. And this is what I love about living in Winnipeg, Manitoba. We are such a culturally diverse, open, and accepting culture. We literally have people from all races, all genders, all communities, out here in solidarity with the LGBTQ2S community. Let's talk to Avalon Doe here. Hi, Avalon. So how long have you been coming to Pride? Uh, since I was really little. And how little is that? Two or three. And what's your uh, connection to the uh, Winnipeg LGBTQ2S uh, community? I'm part of it. <laughs> and there we go. We've got the next generation. <laughs> you should see the look on her face. This totally put her on the spot. I've known young Avalon since she was about seven, seven years old. She's one of my kids before I had kids. Winnipeg trans are driving by, waving flags out the driver's side window. We've got free mom hugs. We've got free dad hugs. It doesn't really matter. Okay, could you please state your name? Hi, my name is Sandy. And who are you with? I am with Family Hugs. Well, let's, tell me about... Free Family Hugs. Okay, tell us about Free Family Hugs. Free Family Hugs is a group that was organized here in Winnipeg um, after a bunch of us noticed people down in the States giving out free family hugs from moms, from dads, from sisters, from aunts, um, for people that have been ostracized by their families um, after uh, coming out. Okay, how long has the organization been uh, running for? This is our first year. Okay, um, and where can people find you? We can be found on Facebook under Family Hugs Winnipeg, um, and uh, that's right now. That's the only place we have. All right. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> got the colors of the rainbow all around us, and I just totally got a bubble in my mouth. That does not taste good. I'd say 50, 60,000 people here. I'd say it wouldn't be far off on that estimate. And so you have a fairly sizable uh, collection of the Winnipeg public. Yeah, it all, everybody comes out like this for this. It's almost like the Santa Claus parade in, in crowd size along Portage. It's unreal. Except better. Uh, yeah. And fewer lights. Yeah. And warm. Yeah.